All right, let's take a look at another question. Uh, this is uh, going to be based on activity-based costing in the previous video. We looked at one situation where we used uh, traditional costing. Uh, we looked at an environment where we used something called departmental rates. And now we're going to look at a question that deals with activities costing. This is a fairly uh, basic uh, question, so hopefully you can uh, follow along and, and get something out of it. So let's see what we've got here. Um, looks like we're going to have two different requirements on this question, uh, but when we see this, notice we've got a number one and a number two here. When we see this, uh, oftentimes we will have to get our answer to the first part before we can move on to the second part. So we've talked about this many times now. We've said that whenever you have a, you know, the question starts here and, and ends way down here, first thing we want to do is read what they're wanting. So it says uh, for number one, the overhead costs assigned to each unit of jackets and pants uh, using the activity-based costing uh, method, I think a word there, were, and then what. Okay, so now we can go back up and look at our scenario. So it says Sophia Clothing Company produces two products, jackets and pants, and a small manufacturing plant. During uh, June, Sophia Clothing produced 100 units of jackets and 100 units of pants incurring a total uh, manufacturing overhead cost of $21,000. Assume Sophia Clothing uses activity-based costing and that its total manufacturing over cost, uh, overhead cost of $21,000 were assigned to the following. So we have our $21,000 right here. And then what this company has done is they have identified four cost pools that they believe to be uh, responsible for the $21,000 or primarily responsible. So we've got materials and inspections, 10 grand, material moves, 2,000, machine setups, three, and machine operations, 6,000. And if we were to add these four figures up, we would come up with $21,000. And then what they've done here in this particular question is they have calculated our uh, our cost driver our activity rates they've done that for us so let's just make sure that we know what these figures are here these are our rates that's right and so how did they get this well i you know i want to tell you they took this ten thousand here and they said materials inspection and preparation what is the cost driver um they said pounds of material. Okay, so how much is that for every pound? Well, they said, okay, pounds of materials for both products, 500 and 500, that's 1,000. So anyway, 10,000 divided by uh, 1,000 equals $10. And so you don't really have to do that because they've done it for you. I just want you to understand where these numbers are coming from. You can take this 2000 and if you take $2,000 uh, and, divide, you know, material moves are the uh, uh, number of moves are the cost driver. Well, it looks like between the two products, we have 80, 80 into 2000 is going to be 25 uh, and so forth. So now you know where those numbers are coming from. All right. Um, so, what do we need to do to figure this out? Well, uh, what we have to say is we're going to say, okay, I've got two products. I've got jackets and I have pants. What a deal. So, 
Let's start with jackets. Since we wrote that down first, we've got 500 pounds of materials at a rate of $10 uh, applied to overhead for each of those pounds. So what's what do we do? Well, it's very basic what we do. We merely take 500 times $10, and that's going to give us 5,000. Okay. And then we're going to continue uh, doing this over and over and over again. So material move, got 50 of them for jackets, okay, times $25. So let's actually, let me go here and um, pounds of raw materials. Uh, that's what that says, pounds of raw materials, I promise. Um, moves, we're going to have setups, and we're going to have machine hours. All right, so we, material moves, we've got 50 of them, times our rate of $25. So that's $12.50. Setups, we have 12 setups for jackets times our rate that they provided us of $150 per machine setup. So let's take 12 setups uh, times 150. That's 1,800. And then we've got machine hours still to go. We've got 90 machine hours times a $40 rate per machine hour. I believe that's going to come out to 3,600. We'll go ahead and check the math. 90 times 40 is 3,600. Okay. So, going to have to kind of squeeze this in here. That's okay. I've got the 3,600 on the calculator already. So, I'm, then I'm going to add 1,800. Okay. I'm going to add 1,250. I'm going to add 5,000. And that's going to give me 11,650 dollars. But we're not quite done because notice it says they want to know the cost of each unit. So we have to ask ourselves, okay, I don't know, how, I don't know what that is. How many units are there? Well, it tells us right back up here. Notice we have exactly, we're producing 100 pairs of jackets, or I'm sorry, 100 jackets and 100 units of pants, okay? So now that we have that information, we can actually do this. We just divide by the number of jackets. Hundred sixteen fifty. Okay. Now, in the interest of time, I'm going to take a shortcut. Notice up here, we only have. Be careful about taking shortcuts. Um, we only have two products. We only have two products, and because we only have two products, we can take this shortcut. If we had three, we would have to do this for at least two of them, and then we could take a shortcut for the third one. So they've given us our $21,000 here in overhead, okay? And so we know already that of that $21,000, $11,650 is for jackets. So if we wanted to take a shortcut here, we could. Now, I don't necessarily encourage you to do this. You can, you can set up these four items just like we gear, but for the pants. But in the interest of time, I'm going to take 21,000. I'm going to subtract out the amount of alloc uh, overhead that was from the jackets. And so I'm going to get a 
a total that way. And, I, and again, if, if, if you were doing this like in a, an online homework or something and you had to like put all input all of these numbers into a little box or something like that, this shortcut's not going to work. All it'll help you do is check your work. Okay, so 21,000 minus 11,650 is 9,350. And then 9,350 divided by uh, 100, what was it again? Pants should be $93.50. Okay. So we've got 116.50 and 93.50. Okay. Again, this video's uh, over 10 minutes already, so I I decided to take a shortcut. But you can you know you can go back separate sheet of paper you know number of pounds uh, or just put materials, moves, setups, manufacturing overhead, and then it would be all of these numbers. Uh, the rates are not going to change. If you do that and you do it correctly, you will end up with 9,350. Then you're going to divide by 100 and you're going to come up with 9,350. Okay. So what's the second part of this? This is uh, learning objectives two and three combined, really. Uh, it says now assume that costs for July are unchanged. Uh, and that in the first week of July, the company produces 28 jackets and 23 pants. What is the applied overhead for each product for the week? Okay, very, very simple. Uh, all we have to do, very, very similar to what we've already done in previous questions, and not just in this chapter either. Okay, so what we're saying here, when, when we're saying that the costs are not expected, change we're saying that these rates are intact okay um, and so we just basically would take 28 times 116.50 that's going to give us part of our answer and then we would take 23 pants times 93.50 and uh, let me clean this up that kind of doesn't look like a nine Still doesn't. So, but I'm over here on jackets, 28 times 116.50. And pants, 23 pants times 93.50. Okay, $1,150.50. Again, if this was in an online setting, you may have to uh, round this $0.50. Cents, um, uh, but we're doing it on paper, so we don't have to do that. So there you go. Activity-based costing for a two-product uh, environment with four activity pools and related cost drivers.